In this video we're going to look at diffusion and osmosis. I'm going to talk briefly about the cell membrane and then we're going to look at the different types of transport that occurs through the cell membrane. Uh, passive transport that doesn't require energy including diffusion and osmosis and then I'll talk about active transport. Okay, so as we already know, the cell membrane consists of a phospholipid bilayer that is selectively permeable, uh, meaning that it can be passed through by some things and not others. And it, this feature of it is important in regulating which molecules come into cells and which molecules leave cells. And the model that we use for the cell membrane is the fluid mosaic model having the phospholipid bilayer with a whole heap of different proteins uh, spanning across the phospholipid bilayer, aiding in that uh, selective permeability. Okay, we have two types of transport. Passive transport, uh, which we're going to look at diffusion and osmosis, does not require energy. So no ATP is used for passive transport. On the other hand, active transport does require the use of energy. So ATP that's made from respiration in the mitochondria needs to be used up. Okay, before we can talk about these, we need to review, uh, review a few terms. Uh, the first one is the difference between the solute and solvent. So a solute is something that is dissolved in water or any aqueous solution. The solvent is the thing that is dissolving the solid. So, for example, in salt water, the solution of salt water, the solute is the salt, and the solvent is the water. So the solute dissolves in the solvent. And also, uh, a concentrated solution is a solution that has more solute as compared to solvent than a dilute solution. So there's more solute in a concentrated than a dilute solution. Okay, diffusion is the first example of passive transport that we're going to look at and it occurs when the solute, so the thing that's dissolved in the other thing, move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So here we have a high concentration of solute in solvent and a low concentration of solute in solvent. Over time the particles of solvent, correction, the particles of solute on this side will move across the semi-permeable membrane from high concentration to low concentration, ending up with both of the concentrations being the same at the end. So we're getting the solute moving, ending up with the same concentration. Osmosis is another example of passive transport. However, in this case, it's the solvent that moves. And the solvent moves from a high concentration to a low concentration. This is a little bit tricky to get your head around as it's actually backwards to what you would usually think. Okay, so here, what we have is a high concentration of solvent to a low concentration of solute. So this has a high concentration of solvent Therefore, we would usually refer to this as a dilute, uh, the, a dilute side or solution. Uh, on this side, we have a lower concentration of solvent to solute, meaning that we have a more concentrated sol solute. So what happens is the solvent moves from the high concentration to the low concentration. So again, it's from high concentration to low concentration. However, if we we're talking about the solute, which is what we usually talk about, you're going from a low concentration of solute to a high concentration of solute. So here we're actually getting the solvent move and we get a change in volume. The other type of transport is active transport and it requires energy in the form of ATP to pump molecules across the membrane and this is usually against the concentration gradient. So for example if you've got a low concentration on one side and a high concentration on the other but you still want to pump these 
molecules from the low to the high, you need a some sort of pump that uses energy because it needs energy because it's going against the concentration gradient. So if this gate just opened, we'd get the uh, because of the concentration gradient, we'd get the molecules going in the opposite direction from the high to the low. In this video, we've looked at the cell membrane being a phospholipid bilayer that is selectively permeable. We've looked at the different types of transport, passive transport not requiring energy and active transport requiring energy or ATP. We've looked at diffusion, which is movement of the solute particles from high concentration of solute to low concentration of solute. And we've looked at osmosis, which is the movement of solvent particles from a high concentration of solvent to a low concentration of solvent. And finally, we looked at active transport, which uses energy. And the reason it needs to use energy is because it's moving molecules against the concentration gradient.